Nobody really knows what effect a fourth wave pandemic will have on the global and US economy. But everybody knows that the Fed will continue kicking the can to the very limits of human perception, and beyond, for as long as their bamboozlers can bamboozle. The markets have been poised for turmoil for a while now. It's already on a knife edge because central bankers have failed the world. But the Fed's plan is to keep the fire hose going full blast no matter what. A market overvalued, global recession. US budget deficit growing. The only growth in the world has been more debt. Organic growth has been negative for years. This virus is also being grossly underrepresented. So why is the market still so high? Three main factors. QE, buybacks, and 401k contributions. Each, at the margin, is buyers at any price to the tune of tens of billions a month. QE is an enabler of socialism, communism by removing any correlation between return and risk, cancellation of the time value of money combined with the assumption that the value of work can be replaced with money printing buybacks facilitate the takeover of companies by the very management that should be accountable to shareholders 401ks are growing at the rate of a trillion a year from contributions that primarily are diverted to passive index funds we are in a recession since 2008 the boom is only emulated by the printing press it's not rocket science the unwind of QE, the outlawing of buybacks and the retirement of 401k holders will see a 10-year bear market year with drops of 40 to 50% like the 2000 to 2010 and the 1970 to 1980 bear markets when the S&P dropped by 40 to 50% taking the S&P back to 1500 or thereabouts. Of course, all future savers for retirement can continue to be forced into buying overpriced housing and capital market assets, bonds and equities globally that guarantee they live with less wealth and money than their parents for decades. Socialism has infected the planet and is cancer, constantly eroding life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. The stock market is no more the economy per se. And anyone who knows anything about markets understands that it is merely a hologram waiting to be turned off when the machine is ready to grind the USA into protoplast patties. Now with the pandemic, that day is not far down the line. Get ready for the black swan to get cooked. The pandemic aftermath are already having a negative impact on Chinese markets and the economy as a whole, amid concerns of a global recession caused by supply chain disruption. China alone being the center of the world's supply chain. The impact on all of China is horrendous economically. Those possibilities mean falling stock prices for US firms especially those exposed to the Chinese market and to the travel sector. Wynn Resorts and Las Vegas Sands, US-based casino firms that own major properties in the Chinese territory of Macau, are both down. US airline stocks are also hurting too, reflecting concerns that the epidemic will encourage people to delay or cancel travel plans. And Disney, whose theme parks in Hong Kong and Shanghai are closed due to the outbreak, is down too. China's economy is gonna go down faster than bottles of vodka and pills at Nancy Pelosi's house. My guess is a 10% chance of black swan type to have the markets. 30% chance that it will cause just a bear market. And a 60% chance that it will cause a minor stock drop and then stocks will climb a wall of worry. The market is toppy regardless of the pandemic anyways. Mission accomplished. Now they can blame the virus for the upcoming financial crash and no one sees that the Baltic dry index was on record low already before we even heard about the pandemic. Time to bet against the Fed. People are going to stay at home. The Chinese economy is going to be hit first, then Western economies. There will be panic buying of supplies, but it won't offset the massive reduction in overall economic activity. Interest rate cuts and money printing are not going to save the market this time. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. The prime reason that this silly virus has any economic impact, effect is that America's and the West's treacherous elite gutted and shipped America's, and much of the West's, manufacturing and industrial base to China, to take advantage of China's slave labor. We are talking about trillions of dollars here. Now, America and the West are tied at the hip economically to a dictatorship. All of this so that the globalists could put more shekels in their bank accounts. The regime in China is incompetent and a danger to the world. Their legitimacy has now fallen to zero. It is lower than a snake's belly. 
This whole thing has been engineered to mask China's economic collapse. They're losing control of the one-party narrative there. The pandemic has revived global economic fears. As the global economy is already in a period of vulnerability. An exogenous shock, such as the new virus variants could be the trigger for the next worldwide recession. The spread of the dangerous virus has spooked global markets and threatened prospects for economic growth. There is hardly anything good that can be hoped for economically because of the new variants of the virus. Increased sales of masks and other protective gear will hardly pick up the slack. With the world economy operating dangerously close to stall speed, the confluence of ever-present shocks and a sharply diminished trade cushion raises serious questions about financial markets' increasingly optimistic view of global economic prospects. Investors seem seriously spooked by the spreading new virus variants. It's not about infection rates or mortality, the economic damage is already very real. Prices of crude oil and other commodities have risen due to the deadly new variants. Observers are bracing for a repeat of the 2003 SARS shock when an epidemic of severe acute respiratory syndrome in China rocked world markets. China's economy is also more fragile today. The pandemic emerged after a period of slowing growth and a tense trade war with the United States. China's consumers play a bigger role in the country's economy now than they did back in 2003, and so far that's where most of the costs of this outbreak have appeared. Airlines and resort companies have seen their stocks fall as a consequence of the reduced demand from China. The outbreak could also make it harder for China to make good on the big purchases of US goods. China's economy is much weaker than in 2003 when it began growing at double-digit rates, fueled by resources from around the world. Chinese companies vacuumed up Australian iron ore and other minerals and demand for oil soared. U.S. crude futures fell to around $25 per barrel at the onset of the SARS epidemic but rebounded swiftly to $30 before breaking the $50 mark in 2004. It was the early stage of the commodities supercycle, or the lengthy commodities boom of the early 21st century. The Chinese economy has also been buffeted by the trade war with the United States. Despite the fact that the two countries signed a truce that was expected to provide some economic relief. Then the fourth wave viral outbreak hit. There is uncertainty about the extent to which the epidemic will spread and intensify. Markets react negatively to increases in uncertainty. Investors will be waiting for more clarity on how severe and how disruptive this outbreak will prove. That rise in uncertainty has investors moving away from risky equities and towards safer investments like bonds. But every economic storm brings a silver lining of opportunity though. Some of today's big winners on Wall Street include a company that's working on a vaccine for the pandemic as well as a firm that makes protective masks. The pandemic aftermath effects are way more grave than they make it seem. Decline in travel has already caused United Airlines to suspend several international flights to Beijing, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Although the Federal Reserve Board can endlessly create US dollars out of nothing, and that will continue to be backed by the US military as much as possible. And that even more so is the case for China, and everywhere else which controls its own central banking systems to backstop the ever-increasing multiplier of fractional reserve banking. There are still relatively objective limits, outside of any human control to the abilities to continue to enforce frauds which become exponentially more fraudulent. Although I would agree with the pity saying that it is not now a wise strategy for the individual investors to attempt to fight the Fed. Since the collective irrationalities seem far greater than any individualized attempts at rationality. The degree to which the banksters can control civilization through controlling the public money supply still has relatively objective limits. Whereby the everything bubble is prone to popping, despite abilities to endlessly create more money out of nothing as debts. Even with negative interest rates, as the cherry on the cake of the maliciousness maximization of the combined money and murder systems. Pandemics have always been the most probable man-made mega-disasters. Although those would be orders less in possible magnitude to what the sun could do, as the most probable of natural mega-disasters. In my view, the greatest overall vulnerability of systems based on making money out of nothing as debts were that paid for strip mining the natural resources of a fresh planet with the series of technologies provided by industrial revolutions. I believe that we are just beginning to reach the tipping points where the about exponentially increasing amounts of mad money as debt, are no longer working the ways those used to do. Because of all the issues surrounding the diminishing returns from strip mining the planet. 
An out of human control fourth wave pandemic could pop the everything bubble. However, the deeper issues still arise after that pandemic played through, that everything was built on the basis of being able to strip mine a fresh planet, while that planet is no longer as fresh as it once was, and never will be again. Strip mining the planet with money made out of nothing as debts did not actually pay for anything, other than to high grade to hell since everything was built on the basis of being able to consume the best quality resources as fast as possible. Hence the issues of diminishing returns are getting worse, faster, as the longer-term consequences of civilization operating through fundamentally fraudulent financial accounting systems. Overall, we are collectively preparing to commit suicide, while the ever-increasing threats from possible pandemics are illustrations of those trends. There are no black swan events now. The Fed is the Dow. The Fed is in total control of the now top-down, centralized economy. All the data, all the curves and graphs, all the P-E ratios and fundamentals are nothing more than a grotesque farce. This is total market rigging on every front. The Fed is the Dow. There are no markets. There is only Fed rigging and buying and rigging and buying. Rinse and repeat. All asset prices are detached from reality and the fundamentals that once upon a time long ago used to drive the markets. And even if the virus kills everyone on earth, the computers will still keep trading until the power goes out. This was the Atlantis report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.